When you preach your breath upon me, everything that comes back to life, and I go from glory to glory. Your name, the hell is your name, read one. Your speech, your name, you can be I'm <laughs> 
Generations after generations, yes, no one wants you. Not the Lord. When you said, yeah. You're the only one. You're the only one. Yahweh, the King of Zion. You're the only one. Yahweh, the King of Zion. Generation. After generations, they see you. There's no one shuns you. Are. And I ask the Lord, what name suits you? And he said, yeah. Generations. After generations, we praise you. Let no one shuns you out. Then I ask the Lord, what makes you to? And he said, Yeah. Generation. After generation, say you, we will find zero. Then I ask the Lord, one name speaks to and he said, yeah. You are the hollow one. You are the holy ones. Yahweh, the King of Zion. You are the hollow one. You are the holy one. Yahweh, the King of Zion. 
Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise this evening. King of glory will bless your holy name. Can we just go ahead and begin to magnify the name of the Lord? Let's bless our King. Father, we give you praise this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Open your mouth wherever you are. Magnify the Lord. And I will thank you. Bless Lord. him. Bless him. Adore him. Yes, thank you, Lord. Bless Lord, him concerning you your family. You. Say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for looking Lord, after me. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank, you. thank you for your glory. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, thank you for strength. Thank, thank you for answer Lord. prayer. We praise thank your name. Your protection. We praise your name. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for health. Thank you for provision. We thank you. We thank I want you to thank him, thank you. especially as you are waiting thank upon the Lord. Jesus. Today is day nine. Let's Jesus. thank him for strength. Thank you, Lord, we thank you. But we have received thank grace. You, it's not by power. It's not by strength. Lord. It's by his grace. It's by his spirit. We praise Lord, we you. bless you. We thank you, Lord. Now let's pray that as the word of God is coming tonight, that God will open our heart to receive his word. Let's ask for a receptive heart. Lord, we pray God, for open my heart to receive your word tonight. We pray that you speak to us. Bless and me through your word. In the mighty name. Jesus is the word. Say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Receive your word, reveal your word, reveal yourself to me. Empower me to receive your word and to run with your word. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we glorify your name this evening. Yahweh will bless you because we know you are here with us. Holy Spirit will rest upon you tonight. Come and explain your word to us in the name of Jesus Christ. The entrance of your word give light and understanding. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. Come and teach us your word. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By the time we shall live tonight, our life will change for good. Amen. There shall be transformation. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Thank In you, Jesus. Lord. Anointed name we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Let's open our Bible to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15. We are going to read verse 1. To three. One Corinthians fifteen. From verse one to three. Tonight we want to deliberate on a theme I titled "What is most important." You want to write it down or write it in your heart. What is most important? It's still a new year. Today is just. 17 or 18, but if I'm right, I mean, today is 19. It's still a new year. All we've been doing since we entered the year as a church, as a ministry, we are setting the foundation right. In Psalm 11 and verse 3, Psalm 11 and verse 3, Bible tells us, if the foundation were destroyed, what can the righteous do? So foundation is very, very important. In other words, beginning is very, very important. So we are trying to set the foundation right. So if the foundation is right, to build on it, 
will be very, very easy for us. And 2024 is our year of double honor, very powerful word. It's a vision that we need to run with. And I know as we are running with that vision, that vision will materialize this year. Every one of us shall be honored Amen. in the name of Jesus. Even our honor will more than double this year. It will be many honors Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we are setting the foundation. And that's what we are doing again tonight. So I read from 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 1 to 3. Paul said, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ died for our sin according to the scriptures. We are talking about what is most important. What does that mean? If somebody tell you this is important, it means it's something of great value, something of great, something very significant. When somebody tell you this is very important, it means something you must take serious. And that's what Paul was saying here. In that verse three, for I deliver to you first. We should underline that word first because Jesus did the same thing. When he was talking in the book of Matthew 6 and verse 33, one of the power, power, powerful Bible verse in the Bible, it said, Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and every other thing shall be added. That is one of the most important Bible verses in the scripture. So the same thing Paul was saying here, for I deliver to you first, first and foremost, most important thing, of that which I also received, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. So, what God or Jesus was saying through Paul here is this, that it's not about doing everything. It's about separating what is most important from something that's less important. We must set our priority right this year. It will be a foolish thing to put what is important behind what is less important. Jesus said, seek first. That is most important. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then, every other thing can be seconded. Every other thing can come after. But you cannot put any other thing before the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And that is what Paul was saying here. Our purpose, our calling, our ministry, or we want to call it your assignment, must come first because it is the most important. Many of us 
what we've been doing is just doing anything. Just doing anything. Whereas you have something more important than what you are doing. We should not forget that God is a God of purpose. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, let me just read verse 1. God told us categorically that he's a God of purpose. God will not do things because he wants to do it. We cannot hurry God with our prayer. We cannot embarrass God even with our giving. No wonder. In Numbers 23, and verse 19. I love to meditate on that scripture. Let me read it before I read Ecclesiastes 3. Please open your Bible. Let's meditate on the scripture. Numbers 23. Number 3 and verse 19. Verse 19. And verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. It's very straightforward. God is not a liar. Man is a liar. Man is a liar. Simple as that. That's why the Bible says, except a man is born again. Without salvation, forget about man. It's only when we are in Christ that, that that new creation can begin to be at work in us. So God is not a, a man. There's no similarity. God. That's why that John 4, 24 said, if you want to serve me, God said, serve God in spirit and in truth. It is when we clothe the spirit of righteousness, then we can begin to experience the move of God. Let's move on. Now a son of man that he should repent. In other words, God cannot change his mind. Man can say something now, and the next minute, man will say, I've not said it, or just in, in fact, he cannot even remember anymore. That's what God was saying here. So go back to that Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Bible says, to everything there is a season a time for everything under the heaven a time to be born and bible continue that but where i wanted to use here is god is a god of purpose he won't do things just because he wanted to do it. I pray that God will give us understanding tonight. Because if we can get this right, every other, thank you. Every other thing will be fine. So what God is telling us tonight is we must focus on what is important. And what is important is seeking the kingdom of God. Just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing 
shall be added. So this year, by the grace of God, people of God, don't spend your energy, time, resources on something of no value. Of relationship and friendship, an association that is going nowhere. Maybe you don't know how on earth to form relationship or association. Bible have not told us that people who don't have friends will not go to heaven. You are here for an assignment. And you must fulfill that assignment. And you and I shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. We are not here to play. Before when I was little and young in faith, when people die, maybe 20, 30, 40, it's really Christian. I will cry until I read in First Thessalonians or Second Thessalonians, Apostle Paul said, "When they die, don't say that the dead. No, we are not." He said, "You say the right word is our brother, our sister, our friend, whatever fell asleep, because if that person is in Christ, he will rise again." He or she will rise again. Hallelujah. So he just fell asleep. So when you finish your assignment here, God can call you home anytime, any day. Of course, as human beings, we want to live long. Our family, one percent. we understand that. That's why if you are a true child of God, you should not be afraid of death. I don't know why Holy Spirit is taking me this direction. If you are a child of God, don't be afraid of death. The Bible said, death is the way to life. As long we focus on what is important. And for 2024 to be a year of gain, a year of profit, you and I must focus solely on things that are important. And the first thing to do, beloved, is to give place to God in our heart. That's the first thing. It's all about Jesus. He said, let's read that verse again. 1, 1 Thessalonians 15.3. I mean, 1 Corinthians 15.3. I deliver to you first of that which I also received it's not a matter of I'm preaching, but I don't know. You know, it's what I have. I receive it myself. That Christ died for our sin. When you go to chapter 2, 1 Corinthians 2, Paul said the same thing. 1 Corinthians 2. Let's read from verse 1. And hi, brethren, which I came to you, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech, or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. Look at that verse 2, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Beloved, that is most important thing. Every other thing is secondary. Every other thing is less of value. We are talking about what is most important. The most important to you, beloved, should be Jesus. That is most important. In that Matthew 6, 33, Jesus did not say we should not seek after other thing. But he said, seek first. Uh, God is a worker. In Genesis chapter 1, and the creation of the of the universe. God worked for six days. Till today, God is still working miracle. He's a worker. God is not a lazy man. He's not a lazy God. In fact, by scripture tells us that for any lazy man or woman, there must be no food. Are we together? 
So God is not saying we should not do any other thing. You should walk. You should marry. You should look after your family. You should look after your wife. Have time for your children. Have time to rest. Time to eat. Time for everything. But the most important, what we must do first is to have a place for Jesus in our hearts. That's the most important. That's number one. Let's read Luke 16 and verse 15. Luke 16 and verse 15. Luke 16 and verse 15. And he said to them, Jesus was talking here, you are those who justify yourselves before men. But God knows the heart. Listen to this. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. So to you and I, what you think is that important, you must do oh, to God is rubbish. Jesus was talking here. So you and I must seek what is important to God. And what is important to him, he has said it, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first my kingdom. And if you are seeking, seek it right. In other words, seek it in righteousness. What's the meaning of righteousness? Right standing with God. What's the meaning of righteousness? People who are seen as being forgiven. What's righteousness? People who have been saved, who believe and have confessed Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. These are righteous people. What is highly esteemed among men? It is an abomination before God. So you and I love to party so much. We love social life so much. For God. Not in the man is spirit. Man is spirit. Man is spirit. So your social life must not be so important. That you neglect your spiritual life. You are a spirit. You are a spirit being. You are not socially being. Many of us are dead spiritually. But you are alive socially. These are less important. Man is spirit. That's why God said, if you want to serve me, you must, not you may, you must serve God in spirit and in truth. That's why we come to the presence of God or we are praying in our house, our heart. Heart is far away. Our mind and our spirit is not connected. That's why most time we pray, we fast, no result because we are not seeking Him with our heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at what Bible says in Jeremiah thirty-three, verse three. Jeremiah thirty-three, verse three, from verse three. Is there? Call unto me, I will answer you, show you great and mighty things which you don't know. Am I reading the right place? You don't know. I need where God said, if you seek me with all your heart, I will find it. He said, then you will see me. You will find me. Most of the time we seek him, but our heart is far away. We are seeking him, but our heart is what? Is far away. 
Yeah, I found it. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Let's read from verse 11. Jeremiah 29 from verse 11. He said, For I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. Look at that verse 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart. Very important. If Jesus is not in our thought, in our imagination, in everything we are doing, we are wasting our time. What is most important? It's not about anybody. It's not about the crowd. It's not about how many friends you have, how many cars you have, how many grammar you can blow, how many uh, uh, clothes you have. All these are less important. All these are less important. Jesus said it. You see, the word of God is what we need. There is no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what we need. In that Matthew 6, before we get to verse 33, look at that verse 2, verse 32. That Matthew 6, 32. Jesus said, For after all these things that Gentiles seek, and what are the things? If you read from 25, things of the world, money, clothing, social life. I think they are things. Jesus said, all these things, Gentiles, the word Gentiles means unbelievers. This is the things they are seeking after. No wonder. Romans 12, 1 and 2. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, Honor God with your body so your service can be acceptable. He said, do not conform to the pattern of this world, to the system of this world. The same thing Jesus was saying here. What unbelievers are seeking is what you Christians are seeking now. You are conforming. He said, no, don't do it. What you need to do is seek first after the kingdom of God. And where is the kingdom of God? It's in our heart. The kingdom of God is, is in our heart. Matthew 5, 8. He said, those who seek God and have pure heart, we see God. Matthew 5, 8. He said, those who have pure heart, we seek God. Our heart is the gateway. And also is a battlefield. If your heart is not right, your life cannot go right. John 14 verse 1. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. When you can settle the word of God in your heart, there is no way you will not have a settled life. Your heart is a seat for everything. It's a battleground where evil thought comes, where scripture comes. That's why it's our warfare, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but strong and mighty in God, pulling down strongholds. All this thing goes through in our heart. When you talk of evil in your heart, you talk of doing good, it's your heart. It's like temptation. There's nothing sinful about, tem about temptation. Yielding into temptation is, 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 is the problem. And we can only win this battle in our heart when we have Jesus. In other words, we are filled with the word of God in our heart. David said in Psalm 119 and verse 11, 
Psalm 19 and verse 11. Your words are hidden in my heart for me not to sin against you. There is no way devil will win battle in your heart when you are filled with the word of God. There's no way. In the book of James, Bible says even devil trembles at his word. Prayer is good. We are told to be, to, to be prayerful. Even Jesus prayed. But I think we put more emphasis today on prayer than the word of God. Let me tell you this, and it's scriptural. Because you are prayerful, that doesn't mean the devil doesn't care about you. No. The devil only afraid those who carry the word of God. In Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. Devil still came. If you are the son of God, jump. If you are the son of God, bow. Three, ten, three uh, tests there. Bible did not allow Jesus to pray. You know, it is written. It is written. It is written. Bible says, and devil left him. An angel came ministering to him. So we must have what God, you know that word, Jesus, you know that word, the truth, the life. Jesus said, the word I speak to you, they are, they are not, they are not flesh, they are truth. Because it is the word of God that gives life. Flesh, profit nothing. John 6 and verse 63. What gives life to our mortal body is the word of God. The word of God is power. Some preacher will say, the word of God carries power. No, the word of God is power. Self. It's power. It's what is living. It's what is powerful. It's what is mighty than two-edged sword. Piercing at marrow. Designer of thought. The word of God. Hebrews 12. Is what is our the most important thing? The word. From the beginning, what was with God? And God is the word. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. He spoke the word. And where would that word reside? In our hearts. The first, most important thing is, give God the first place in your heart. And live for his kingdom and righteousness. Many Christians today, we don't care about evangelism anymore. You see it as a waste of time. You see it as pastor job, pastor's job. You see it as none of your business. No. It's our God's father. It's our father's business. Evangelism is our father's business. We must all do it. If you can't go on evangelism, who are you praying for? As a pastor, it's our duty to pray for everybody. Pray for your family. Many of us living in this part of the world, what we do is we give money to our family back home. Most of these people are not saved genuinely. Though they are going to church, but they are not actually saved. Let me tell you, they will still go and use that money to enchant you. Because if they if you are expecting, let's say, 500000 from you, and you gave them 200 say, eh? I asked for half of a million. He's giving me 100000 I know what to do. They are mad. What we need to do is to pray for their salvation. Anyone that is not saved, I said, you cannot be yoked, don't believe that. You cannot be yoked. You can't trust them. It's when a man receives Christ, that is when he can become a new man. The word of God is powerful. Time will not permit us to start reading the word of God. In the book of Colossians, we are told that now we have two types of man. Old man 
a new man. He said, do not put on old man anymore. After you have undressed yourself of old man, and what are that? Malice. All the work of flesh, adultery, fornication, lying, drunkenness, sexual immorality. These are old men, old nature. But since we have put on new man, which is in Christ, Paul said, now hold fast to which I've preached to you, which I've received myself, Christ who died for our sin. Beloved, this is the most important thing. We must run with this year. Let's move on because of our time. Number two, next to God, give priority this year to your family. I hope somebody's listening to me tonight. This is one of the words, the prophecy God gave us as a ministry this year. And by the grace of God, from March, we will be praying, there will be revival, praying for family. And by the grace of God, in November, our conference, establishment conference, is going to center on family. Because every good thing and bad thing stems out of family. You must be praying for your family every day. Number one target of the enemy is marriage through family. When there is no family, there's no marriage. When there's no marriage, there's no family. And when there's no marriage, no family, there's no church. When God called Abraham in Genesis 12, he said, come out of your family. The land I will show you, I will bless you, I will increase you. In you, in other words, in this promise, all families, Genesis 12 and verse 3, shall be blessed, including my family, including your family. Can you see why? You must be praying for your family. I've seen many pastors, they put their ministry ahead of their family. What a mistake. After God is your family. My ministry comes after my family. It's scriptural. After God in your heart, it's your family, your wife, your spouse, your parents, your children, your family member. We're talking tonight on what is most important. If you can follow these things this year, beloved, God will increase you in hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I love it when God spoke and God said, do this, do this. It's very powerful. This is the leading of God. What is most important? In other words, you and I have been running after less important things. Things of no value. Like I show us in that Ecclesiastes 3, God is a God of purpose. Because we are being worried, we are anxious, that cannot hurry God. No one can hurry God. He said in that Ecclesiastes 3, 11, he makes everything beautiful in his time, not in our time. Can you see? We can't hurry God. If it's not the will of God for you, he will not do it. He will only encourage you. It's the system of our Father. We must adopt and subscribe to that system. If our father is a father, is a God of purpose, so why you and I, we are neglecting purpose for pleasure? You see people dressing their body, flesh. When it comes to party, they take their time. Especially our, our, our mothers. <laughs> God have mercy on, on them. They take their time to make up, to dress. They are going to party. You see people coming to church, they can't be bothered. In fact, let me tell you this. Though some people can say, uh, you are showing off. Don't listen to them. When you are coming to the presence of God, that is when you should put on the best. Because you are coming to worship the king. 
put on the best clothes you have, best shoe, give best offering, give best everything you have, including your dancing, best because you are in the presence of your king or your father. These are the important things. You put on shirt of one million pounds, shoe. Oh, these are fine. Don't get me wrong, but they are not important. If you are dressing your flesh and your show, your your soul is, is perishing. You say, what is going to be a gain for a old man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? In 2024, let's give our time, our energy, our money, our resources, our talent, everything, spend it on what is more important. Like I said, the next to God is to give top priority to your family, your spouse, your children, your parents, because these are your inheritance. Fathers, Spend time with your family this year. Many Christian families don't pray together anymore. No time for devotion. They don't pray on phone. They don't pray in one-on-one -on -one when they are in the house. Though they might be praying separately, but you know what? It's good to pray together. If it's five minutes, even five minutes is too much. hands as a family, prayer of agreement. This is how it should be. In the morning, do it. In the afternoon, if you can pray on phone, do it. Then before you go to bed in the night, everybody, pray together. This is how it should be done. Keep devil away from your family. Next to that is your life assignment. We are talking on what is most important. Important things that you must run after. Every other thing is, they are pointless. Next to that is your life assignment. So if I ask you now, what is your purpose of living? Or are you just existing? If you are yet to know this, it's time to go to God and ask him, this is my purpose. You know what? One of the short ways to know your purpose is to see things you are passionate about. Most time, you get it right. But it's good to hear from God. But most of the time, through what you have interest in, your passion is, is around that corner. You can sing, you love to play drums, you love to write, you love to read. Whatever it is, you have passion for something. Your purpose is not too far in that place. I remember when I was around age 12, I just developed interest in playing drum sets. I just love to, if if I'm going anywhere, anywhere, even if it's on TV, I see somebody playing drums, I will stop. I will fall. forget myself. I'll be watching open mouth like this. I just have, I just have that interest. And when God will have it by his grace, he endowed me with that gift. Nobody taught me how to play drum set is amazing. The testimony is there in my church in, in Baden, Nigeria. Nobody taught me how to play drum set. Nobody. God endowed me with that gift. Somebody is saying, is that possible? Have you not read? In the book of Amos, we realized that all the music instruments that David was using David was the one that made them whole. Such rich scripture. And there's no place where we read that David went to one school to learn music. No. Holy Spirit can do anything. No wonder. Bible says with God, all things 
not few things, not some things. All things are possible for those who believe. If you have, you have interest and you believe, God will do it if it's the will of God for you. I just realized, begin to play, begin to play, and to the glory of God is today. I'm doing, in fact, I love it. Sitting on drum set, oh my God, that's my word. Not knowing God is going to call me. But God used that gift to keep me in his house. Can you see God? That's what I'm telling your parents in our ministry and those who are listening to me tonight as, as a Christian family, don't allow your children to just go to church. Let them learn something. Instrument. Maybe they can sing or something. That we keep them in church. He said, teach your children the way of the Lord. When they are old, they will not depart from me. From the, the word of God is true. I remember Traveling from Nigeria, now living in the UK for some time. In the parliament, I was following my friend, no church, nothing. But you know what? Within me, something was hitting me up. I'm telling you oh, the truth. God is my witness. Something was hitting me inside that. Huh? You know you can't do this when you are in Nigeria. Me, I will not go to church on Sunday. I will not go to VG on Friday. I will not go to prayer practice on Saturday and so many prayer meetings during the week. I said, no. I just turned myself back from those friends. Is that not what the Bible says? Teach your children the will of the Lord. They will not turn from it. Of course, as a youth, you have some moment you want to go your, you want to go other way around, but God knows this. You see, the word of God is seed. That seed is there. Find my way back to church. Join choir. Begin to play drum set again. I met my wife in the church. Look at us today. It's a place for you. So God used that. What I, I was trying to say is that God used that to keep me in his presence. And look where I am today. No wonder David said in Psalm 27 verse 4. He said, now one thing I desire in my life. To be in the presence of God. All the days of my life. So David moved from being a seeker to a dweller. You know that's the next, next phase. It's good to seek God. You can move from being a seeker to a, a dweller. He became a dweller. I want to dwell. You know, to dwell means to tarry. Those who dwell in the secret place of the most high shall live under the shadow, eh, not seeking. You know, seeking, you can come today and not come tomorrow. But when you become a dweller, became a dweller, you are there always. Somebody is being liberated tonight. Somebody is receiving understanding tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the next one is your assignment, your purpose, your calling, your mission. For those by his grace, realize ourselves, no giving, no going back. Press on. It's the will of God for us. He said, woe to a man who has laid his hand on a plow and look back. We are not going back. No, we've come too far to go back to the world by his grace. We're not going back. When everybody left Jesus, Jesus turned to Peter, John, all of them. Or oh, you two want to go back? He said, go where? <laughs> we are not going anywhere. We are not going back to Egypt in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For those who are yet to know their purpose, go to God in prayer. Pray. God will answer you. He said unto him, all flesh will come. The one who answer, God answer prayer. He said, call unto me, I will answer you. When you call, God will speak. 
And when you speak, you will hear him, the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because at times God speaks, people don't hear. Because distraction everywhere. So when God speaks, ask him those things in your heart. My life assignment, I want to know this, he will speak to you. Then the next one is to be a blessing to people. As I'm pre preaching now, I'm blessing lives. I've been commanded to bless. Is more blessed to give than to take. We need this understanding. Many of us, we just want to take. You want to take. No. If you give, we're not talking about money now. Time, resources, anything you have, you give. You are blessed. We are blessed to be a blessing. That's why the gift of God in your life is not for you. It's to bless life. We are raised, we are called to bless each other. At times now we listen, maybe on the internet or live, to some of men of God and women of God I believe God is with them. And by listening to them, I'm revived. I'm fired up. I'm encouraged. What am I doing? God is using them to bless me. As I'm preaching tonight, teaching tonight, I believe I'm blessing lives too. It's straight by butter. Bless people. Give, including money. Many Christians are so stingy. You know what you are doing? You are locking gates. Your blessing is more blessed to give than to take. You see people in need and you have it. Give. God love a cheerful giver. Give. I'm just telling you the secrets. Give. Give your time. Encourage people. Some people, they are not pastor. In fact, there is no title. But when they speak, when they advise, when they encourage, you'll be blessed. That might be your gift. Some people have the gift of listening. When you talk, you just listen. But then they listen to you and it's something. You have peace in your heart. Blessing. Some people are blessed with words. Oh my God. Someone like me, uh, I jump, I talk fast. Some people, when they talk, oh Jesus, so calm, so peaceful, it's a gift. Nobody have it all. Apostle Paul said, we speak in part, we prophesy in part, we see vision in part. Nobody have it all. There's no best tie that this one is no, is no, is not in the kingdom of God. That's why we must come together. I tell our workers in church, you must do your part. Too much. At times on Sunday like this, your heart is heavy. You are down. By the time choristers, anointed choristers are singing, worshiping God. That's it. Your fire up. Before you know it, tear is coming from your eyes. You have the spirit of, you see, that is it. You have been blessed through the administration. Someone else come, lead prayer. Oh my God, fire up. I do my part. We are called to bless each other. These are the most important thing. God is telling me to tell you tonight, be a blessing to people this year. And you will see the hand of God in your life. Including money. Bless people. Everybody will come to church because of prayer. Some people will come to church because of food. Some people, what they need now is food. Give them. Jesus did all this thing. He fed 5,000 people. He fed 4,000 people. Many of them never... Return to him again. Glory be to God. But he was a blessing to them. He 
you see an old man, old man in the bus, dressed tattered, no food homeless, you can't give five pounds. You can't give 10 pounds. You can't go and buy water and give. You just walk away. And your heart is not troubled. Check yourself. You see children outside homeless, walking around the street. You hold your own children and run away. He says, it's not your concern. They are not your children. Watch your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at what Apostle James tell, to, tells us. The most important ministry that we must do. James Going to find it. I know it's in the book of James. Yeah, James chapter 1, verse 27. James 1 27. He said, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans. Can you see? And we do those, especially when in trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted, clean from the world. So it's not about you praying for yourself every day, pray, 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 fast, 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 and you have nothing to do with your neighbor. People are going hungry outside, you are throwing food away in your house. Ah. He said the best religion, the best service you can do is to visit these people, homeless people. Orphans, widows. We have widows in our church today. We have homeless people in our church. Many people just close eyes to them, like we don't see them. I know we are changed from tonight. These are the most important thing we must do to acquire the blessing of God. And finally, ask yourself, with all these things, what legacy am I going to leave behind? And where are you going? Because either you like it or not, you will not be here forever. You and I will not be here on earth forever. You will die one day. I will die one day. What legacy are you going to leave behind? What are they going to say about you? Today, night boy is talking about Mandela, Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela, glory be to God. Nelson Mandela. Everybody's talking about it. He did something and something positive. Something positive, something very important. Everybody's talking about people like. Uh, Mary Celeste, a lot of wonderful people. If you want to turn to the scripture, Paul, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, even Jesus, our Lord Jesus, we're talking about their legacy. Today. What are they going to say about you and I after you have gone? And what they are going to say about us, we must start doing it from now. We must think about it. These are the most important things. If we do all these things as Holy Spirit has led us tonight, there is no way 2024 will not be a year of double honor for you. It's going to be a year of tremendous blessing. A year where divine intervention will be your experience daily. Unless God has not spoken. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's going to be a, a year of blessing. Overwhelming blessing. A year where is where his grace shall be multiplied upon you. A year where our best will come on every side. I'm declaring over you a year where you break through to the right and to the left. A year where you will not struggle at all. A year of open heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if we obey the word of God.
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Spend time with your family. Improve yourself spiritually. Look after your children. Be a blessing. Focus on your purpose. Help people. And know that one day you are going. Let's read James, John 14 as we share the grace. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Just believe in me and I in you. He said, I'm going to prepare a place. Verse 3. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Jesus will come back. He's coming back. That where I am, you and I may be there with him. And if we are going to be there, we need to walk at it. The Lord will bless us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You can omit yourself. Just declare this word. That for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Say that. For me for to live, live is Christ. Is Christ. And to die, and to die again. Again. again, for me so to me is Christ. Christ. Christ, and to and die to is die again. again. Just open your mouth and pray, say, Lord, help me to walk in wisdom this year. Help me to okay. walk in your wisdom. Like we said last week, Friday, what we need is wisdom. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. Just see, you know, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Say, Lord, make me wise. So, Father, make me wise in the name of 2024 Jesus. 2024 will be a year of harvest, a year of honor. In the that name of Jesus, you and I can walk in victory that mm. God has won for us. Pray to yourself, pray, pray, pray as we go, that God will keep us, we will mm. not go astray. We we'll live our life to please God this year and beyond. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray for your family, pray for divine protection. The Lord will protect you and your family that no evil shall be for you. And as we know, as a church, as a ministry, we are fasting for 21 days. Today is day nine. Pray that God will give us strength. He will give us strength. We need our strength. And God did it in vain. He has not called his children to seek him in vain. There shall, there shall be harvest. In the, name of Jesus, there shall be in the harvest. name of Jesus. There shall be testimony every day. Breakthrough every day. There shall be testimonies and In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. May your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty <laughs> name, we are prayed. Amen. Father, we Amen. thank you for tonight. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your leading. Lord, let your word be germinated in our heart. Let your word grow in our heart. Give us grace to be obedient children in the name of Jesus. And let the blessing of obedience come upon us. Amen. In shall be glorified. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I can see Amen. the internet is lagging. You're not hearing me. You're hearing me after I've spoken. It is well. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. For those who are uh, on church, you have no church, why can't you join us at Divine Assembly Ministry? You can check us, check us out on our website, Facebook, Instagram. Our services on Sunday, we have family worship service. Everybody is welcome, including children. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 12. On Tuesday, we have prayer meeting at 7 p.m. And Friday like this, Bible study, 7 p.m. And we have monthly programs. Uh, yearly program, things like that. All I can tell you about this ministry that Jesus is here and the love of Christ is rooted in our heart. Hallelujah. God bless you. 
in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace. Everybody, unmute yourself. You can put your video on if, if that is okay where you are. And let's share the grace at the count of three. Let's go. One, two, three, go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us Amen. now Amen. and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Say Amen. to yourself, surely, God goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, people of God. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. Amen.